And my name is Brian Fawcett. I'm the Recreation Director here in town and get to work with the volunteer board that is the Grand, Rector, or Grand Historical Museum Advisory Board to put on these events. And we have a few other ones that I'll mention later on in, the, uh, in my welcome. The bookmarks I just gave out to you have some grand fun facts on the back. And I think Russell will um, kind of just give us some new facts maybe today. We'll learn a couple of things. These came from other publications that have been circulated throughout the city. So as we can tell, you know, history is kind of who writes it, right? Um, so we're going to go along with what we learn, continue to educate ourselves, and, and move along. If we find out new facts, then history can maybe not change, but we learn more about it. So it's not always completely set in stone. So with that being said, I'd like to also mention a couple other events that the museum board is working on with Russell for these two events, October 5th and October 9th. We're going to have cemetery tours. We're going to get on a 14-passenger minibus, so it's limited to 12 folks at a maximum. You need to register just like you did for today. Go on our website and register for the event. So Russell's going to go around to Children's Chapel Cemetery. Linwood Cemetery and Providence Historical Church Cemetery. And uh, just give some facts about those three cemeteries in particular. We're going to get out of the bus and Providence. And all of them. And all of them we're going to get out and, and dive a little bit deeper into what's there and what we can learn from what's there. And all of those events run about two hours long on the 5th and the 9th. So go on our website and check those details out. Our last Lunch and Learn that is scheduled for right now. These have been very popular, so thank you guys for coming out. But our last Lunch and Learn is October the 20th. That will be here at the museum, and it's with John Gus, who is the director of the Alamance County Textile Heritage Museum. So John will talk to us about what they have out at that museum, textile heritage, in Graham in particular, but Alamance County as a whole will be his kind of specialty. For part of that exhibit, or as part of that Lunch and Learn, we're going to have an exhibit here at the museum that will begin early October that will have quilts from, Russell's got a few, I think Jeanette has a few, I have a few from my family that may make the cut, and um, just to kind of give a throwback, if you will, to the art of quilting and just to see the beauty, Russell, I know, has a few quilts that have a very cool story, so that'll be interesting to hear, so Check out our Facebook page or our website to, um, to know the exact details on, on when that exhibit will be open. But you can check out the museum any Friday or Saturday from 10 to 2. And then by special appointment, we have a group coming in later this afternoon. So you guys can get together a group and come kind of have a, a private tour. If you will. So if there aren't any questions for me, very good. Then I'll turn it over to Russell. All right, thank you. Right. Um, he didn't say anything about me as far as like who I am, and I'm really a nobody, so <laughs> I don't have any credentials or anything, but I will tell you that I graduated from Graham High School and went to UNC Chapel Hill and then went into business with my family, and that's what I've been doing for 50 years or whatever. So I, I am not an expert on history. I put local historian, but I mean, I just consider myself an amateur. I'm not really, I don't have a PhD, I've not written any books, so everything I'm going to talk about is from these books that I've read and pulled together, um, some information that I think you'll find interesting about Graham and Alamance County and uh, the period around the time that they were established. Uh, my mother, though, and I should have been a school teacher, my mother was a teacher, she taught Gail Miller. Algebra, she taught Faye. Did she teach you Faye? And uh, Sarah Graham. Uh, Sarah Graham's not here. Well, she taught a couple of you. And um, I should have gone into education because I really do like it, especially like history. My mother taught algebra, but, um, and I've moved this stand. Um, so, what I'm going to give you is a pat. I'm going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a pop quiz. Oh, um, 
other information in there too. Uh, Y'all can share. Because uh, I didn't make the 15, and I think I'm going to run out. Yeah, you can share. And, uh, it's not cheap. Who needs a writing utensil? There we go. Oh, yes. I do actually have a couple more. So does our So go flip over to the page behind this cover page, and it says pop. All right, uh, Diana, you can have one. We have enough. So you can't. Don't look. I'm just afraid. So just take a minute to um, look at these questions. They relate to things that have been said and read, uh, written about the county. And uh, then we're going to talk about each one. And uh, I'll give you like a couple of minutes. You should be. Just go ahead and just put down whatever you think, and then we'll go from there. Ooh, ooh, When you finish, just put, put your paper down, and then I'll know if it's still working. I sound like a teacher, though. Turn, turn your paper over. <laughs> You're just guessing, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Is anybody who's still who's still working? Diane, don't Diana, don't talk. Don't talk. That was something my teachers always with. Um, Okay, are we finished? Anybody still need more time? Okay, good. So um, let's let's skip the first question and uh, let's go to the second question. And we're going to start with that one. Why are we skipping the first one? Well, because I've got this uh, map. We're going to come back to the first question. I've got this map of the county and I've done something to it for the second question. Then I want to get rid of that. Start over. Okay, <clears throat> the first question says um, the exact center of the county is actually several blocks south of the courthouse where the present day McDonald's is now located. I forgot to put now located in there, so that's why it's scripted in. What's the answer? Who put true? Raise your hands higher, I couldn't see. So that's like half the people. Who put false or don't know? Okay, the answer, in my opinion, is false. So uh, what happened is that, and we're kind of, we're going to backtrack after we get through with this question. In January of 1851, the General Assembly uh, passed, uh, or, or issued a charter of incorporation for the town of Graham, and a commission was appointed to purchase land, and they did. And Gerwood Stokes writes in his book about the history of the Grand Presbyterian Church, on the very first page, he says that the exact location was found to be a marsh in the corner of the present day South Main Street and Robin Lane, the site of the net canal, present day McDonald's. And because that didn't work, you know, if you go to McDonald's, you'll see it's kind of a 
swap the area of it. They moved it to where it is now. But I decided to test that out. And, um, well, I, I just need to. Can you just can you hold it for a second and just uh, well pull the wire over the. Actually, let me come up to it. I got to this one. Uh, so yeah, the little things that fit right here wouldn't work. So I'm trying this. So this is a map of the county, and I took strings, and of course they don't want to cooperate because they're touching each other, and measured all. Um, you know, diagonally, leaving off this little piece. And what I found is that the center is actually right on top of the courthouse. So, you know, the McDonald's is not participating because it wants to play with it, but the McDonald's is actually down here on this little corner. So I think that was hearsay. I think they somebody just said, well, it really was not like right there, and they moved it. Uh, but I'm thinking that it was, and Burwood Stokes just, uh, I'm going to take this down, put it in his book, uh, you know, assuming that it was right. I just want to get this back. So this is a map of the county in 18, I mean, 1893. But we're going to backtrack. We're going to talk about before that. So go back to, um, and I will grade your papers. <laughs> go back to uh, question number one. We are going to do question number one. But I want to give you a little history first uh, before we get to that. And um, before, as you may know, Alamance County was originally part of Orange County. And Orange County also included Durham County, and that wasn't established until the 1750s, Orange County. Before that, it was part of Granville County, which was part of the track that Lord <coughs> Granville, uh, his last name was Carteret, in Carteret County, um, got from the king, you know, the land, he gave all the war proprietors. Lord Granville owned all of that area, all of this area from our area all the way to the coast. But it started to be divided up slowly and cut down and sold. And then the king asked for them to all sell their land back, but he didn't. So he kept his, and he got into a messy divorce, and then he died, and his heirs uh, tried to start selling the land piecemeal, piece by piece. But in the meantime, <clears throat> in the meantime, Orange County is right here. Orange County was formed, and it included Durham County. And what was over here um, in this whole area, actually in all of Orange County, which we call the bigger Orange County, was not much. There was not many people here. There were not any. Uh, in fact, one writer from the Alamance book writes that... Um, um, there was nothing here. Um, anyway, there was nothing here but, um, oh, here it is. Uh, no schools, no churches, no doctors, no uh, parson, no lawyers, no stores, no grocers, no taverns. So it was literally the back country. There was nothing really here except over here in Hillsboro they established county seat or Orange County. <clears throat> so prior to that, uh, when Dr. Vincent was here, he talked about the um, Holtz and Michael Holt the first, Michael Holt the second, Michael Holt the third, and then E.M. Holt was the fourth generation. The Holtz were here. The Holtz were living down here where uh, E.M. Holt School is and in that area. There were some other people living here, too. Um, this is Judge Ruffin. He's on this map. He was living here. He was a, a famous or infamous judge uh, because for two things. He was a very good. He studied law at Hillsborough. 
He became a lawyer. He became a North Carolina Supreme Court justice. He wrote a very important case about slavery that established the firm slavery will, you know, the master has a, a power over the slave no matter what. But he was, he was famous for being a, a judge and a very good jurist, but he was also, during this, right before the Civil War, Judge Ruffin owned 99 slaves and was not a very good slaveholder. He had an overseer that he instructed to be very strict to make sure that the slaves stayed, um, you know, obedient. <clears throat> All right, so um, question number, we're going to skip right on. If you want to move on as fast as I can so we don't really get too hot out here. So question number one, Providence Church played a significant role in the establishment of Alamance County and it could be considered its birthplace. Who put truth? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Who put no? Well, you're right. Or those two are right. Now, I say no because it did play a role, but it wasn't significant. Um, and what happened was there, were, there was already a sentiment to separate from Orange County back in the um, you know, 1830s or whatever. What do you think the main reason was? Who said that? That's it. Well, that's one. I'm sorry. That was, this was after that. This was in the 1830s. We had already were already independent. Okay, so one of the reasons, yes, was the courthouse is over here. And if you lived over here, you had to cross over quite a few rivers to get to the court. And you would think, well, why? Why do you got to? Why do we have? Why is that so important? Well, you had to go to the courthouse if you were sued, if you were um, registering a will or uh, filling out, you know, what do you call it, um, uh, probating a will. But the main reason was buying land. And what was happening was before this uh, actually happened. There were all these people moving down from Pennsylvania and the north to this area in the 1750s. And there was a ton of land transferring hands, and people were buying land, and people were selling land. And they had already started presenting the fact that they had to go across the river. Well, why was that a big deal? They didn't, the reason is there was really only one road or ford or bridge. And that was in Paul River. Paul River did exist as early as 1750, somewhere in there. And it was in a shallow point in the river where you could ford the river with your wagon or your horse. There was no bridge. And there was even a little ferry back then. But that was it. You know, if you came to the river, you had to figure out how to cross it. And if the weather was bad or the river was up, or the bridge, whatever bridge was built, maybe a small bridge, it might be washed out. So that was reason number one. What was reason number two that they probably wanted to separate? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> so nobody knows. Um, during this time where before 1850, there was no railroad in um, the, in the air. And I've got another little um, map. I'm not going to put this one up, but look at this later. This map shows the railroad in 1872, and you can see before that that it went to Raleigh. It went from Newburn and Wilmington. Raleigh and it stopped. And then there was Charlotte. There was already settlements, you know, in the area of Charlotte, uh, Salisbury, Salem, Fabra, the Moravians were already here, but there was no 
connection. So there was already talk in the 1830s to build the railroad that would connect Wally to Charlotte. But they didn't know, they didn't know where it was going to be or, or when they would build it. But the people in Alamance, the people in our present day Alamance County knew that it was possible that it would come through Alamance County. So that was one of the other reasons that they wanted to um, uh, separate, because if they separated it, then they would own land that might be on the railroad tracks, and then their businesses and all could benefit better from having a place to take your freight or your crops or whatever, and they uh, um, recognized that that was a good thing. But the, but the question was, where was the railroad going to go? And um, i got to pull this one back up. Oh, look, on, look on the next page of your map. Um, and I've skipped something here, but anyway, we'll go back to that. Let's go, let's go, let's skip that. Um, so there was already, a, I'll come back to that. There was already a movement to separate. And so finally, and I, the reason I say Providence Church, they have on their sign, one of their signs that says, birthplace of Ellen. But I haven't mentioned Providence Church, so yeah, this part. So there was already this fervor to move to separate. And finally, in um, uh, around, let me find my spot here. Um, and, and a bill was, a bill was uh, introduced into the North Carolina legislature on January the 1st of 1849 as a proposal to to separate from Orange County, and the bill passed. And then there was a vote of the people in the area whether or not they wanted to do it, and they did. And the reason was there was enough people over here, and there were other reasons. You know, there was built, you know, you have to build a courthouse, well, why would, you know, that's expensive. But there were quite a few, enough people who said, yes, we want to be separate from Orange. So in the meantime, um, Giles Madden is the one who made the pro proposal to the legislature. Giles Madden owned property right here in what is present day Madden. Now you have to understand that there was no towns here, not Madden, not Graham, not Burlington, except the little village of Paul River. But Giles Madden owned land right here. And he knew that if they put it through the county, probably go on his land. And so he made, he, God was able to get it passed and put this resolution before the legislature, and it passed. So his wife is the one who, now this is their portraits here on this page with the map. This is Giles Nevin. His portrait is in the Nevin Museum. This is his wife, Mary Catherine Yancey Nevin. She was Bartlett Yancey daughter, she, her portrait is in the Yanceville, Castle County Museum in Yanceville. But these are the two people who were very important to getting it passed, and then when it passed, Mary Catherine was the one who said, let's name it Graham. Because the governor had just been, William A. Graham had just finished his term, and she said, let's name it after William A. Graham. He was not the governor when it happened, but he was the previous governor. She said, let's name it after, let's name the county Alamance. Why would they name it Alamance? Huh. The Battle of Alamance. It was the Battle of Alamance Creek, actually. There was no town of Alamance. But the Battle of Alamance had already happened during the, the previous to the Revolutionary War. 1771. So that was like an important statement that these people in this area made uh, to, uh, I guess, pre-revolutionary thought or whatever. 
So she said, let's name it Alphonse, and that's what we did. So have I mentioned Providence Church yet? <laughs> We're getting there. Um, so that's basically the gist of it. The other reason was that all these people uh, were pushing for it because Ian Holt was building his cotton mill. He was down here, down here, and he wanted to separate, and he wanted the railroad to, and all these people were saying, if we build our own town, we can buy land, and we can invest in that land, and then when it becomes a county, we'll sell our land, and the prices of our real estate will make money. So just like now, the real estate prices of everywhere is going through the roof. They saw if we buy it cheap, and then when we have our own county and a new town, we're going to invest in businesses and, you know, sell lots and all of that. So they were already pushing to do that, um, and, it, and it worked. The only thing that Providence Church did, and some of their members may have been a part of these groups of people pushing it, but the church itself didn't do it. The only thing it did was it provided the building for the first court session until they could build a courthouse. They, and the story of Providence, I'm not going to get into that, but I'll tell you that more about that when we go to the cemetery. Um, and I can sort of skip the part I'm going to get back to. Down here was Paul Fields, the Scotch and Irish moved here and started uh, Presbyterians who started Hawkins Church about 17. Cane Creek is down here. The, Cain, the Quakers came down from Pennsylvania. They started Cane Creek Meeting House at the same time. And Providence was right here, but there's questions in my mind about 1763 as being their founding date. There's really no evidence of that. But they were here in 1792 or three or four. So uh, those were the three main churches. There was no Methodist church, there was no Baptist church, there was no Episcopal church. The only Episcopal church was in Hillsborough. Um, so Providence was here, but they, it wasn't the people pushing it. It was these people and all the business people and the farmers and the landowners who pushed it. But they did have a building, and it was central you know, to the middle here. So they agreed to rent it to the county for two years until the county built the first courthouse. So I've got a picture of the courthouse. Uh, this is the original courthouse. I'll just hold this up. Um, this is what they built. This is what was before um, the courthouse we have now. What do you notice about it? That's kind of interesting. Oh, bell tower. I call it bell tower. What about it? I can't hear. No. I'll tell you. Is what? Well, it it was a big, big bell tower, and the bell used to be in Centennial Park, but they moved. I don't know where it is, but that was the bell that was in the bell tower. The interesting thing is that the bell tower was on the south side of the courthouse, not the north. And the reason for that was that they, the city fathers, actually thought, actually thought that the city would grow that way, but it didn't. It grew that way. So, Bell Tower was on the south. Everybody started building stores and all to the north. And what did the south side become? Residential. And the Holt's daughters, the Holt, Ian Holt built houses for his daughters, and L. Banks Holt built his house, and then all the way down, if you remember, back in the day, there were nothing but houses there. Diana and Jerry, I'm sure you remember. There were no businesses like there are now. <laughs> so, the only thing Providence did, essentially, was to provide a place for 
the court sessions to be held, and the county did uh, pay them for that. All right, so let's move to question number three. This is getting hot out there. And I'll try to go quick. Question number three. The city fathers voted not to allow the North Carolina Railroad within a mile of the city square. Who put true? Who put false? <laughs> What's it? Why is it tricky? Not allow it within a mile. They only allow it. No, um, this <laughs> says the city fathers voted to not allow the railroad within a mile. They didn't want it any closer than a mile. I guess that's another answer, but I don't have an answer to Well, I'm going to say that that question is also false. <laughs> because uh, they did want it in the city. And the reason they wanted it in the city, and this is from our broad books that you can go, we can look at them later. Um, they didn't buy these, you know, when they set out the city and the, laid out the plots and everything, the railroad hadn't been built yet, but it was coming. And they didn't buy those plots and all of it thinking the railroad wasn't going to be here. They wanted it to be here. They wanted the train to go through, maybe not right on Court Square, but they wanted it to be close by. <clears throat> and before we get to that, i got to go back and I'm forgetting myself. The railroad may not have even, might not have even, come to the county at all. But it did, and there's a reason. Um, they could have easily, if you look at this picture, you'll, look, you'll have to look at it later. The way that the train is, I'll point it out with my table. Um, the, the train comes up to here for a while, and then it makes a big hump around the area and comes back down. Why didn't they build it? From Raleigh, just straight across. Do it. Do what? And what did? Yes. Who said terrain? The real reason is terrain. Yes. So if you look at this map right here, you will see. And, 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 and the railroad people were not interested in changing anything. Their only interest was building the railroad as cheaply as they could build it. And they picked the easiest amount of land to build it on. So if you look at this map again, you'll see, barely see it, but the railroad comes through all of these places where it's right through here. There is no river except for the Hall River. They had to cross the Hall River. But all of these headwaters for all these creeks and everything, they missed every bit of that. And they just kind of skirted through whatever the highest part of the land was. Because if they had to build uh, bridges and you know uh, whatever, it was going to be costly. They could have gone to right through Pittsburgh. But what's in Pittsburgh? The little mountain range. Chapel Hill, you know Chapel Hill. If you know Chapel Hill, there's sections of it that are very hilly. That's a lot of expense to build bridges. And then you had to maintain them because, you know, uh, if they washed out, the railroad was out. So they purposely did not want to go straight, you know, like as the crow flies, they wanted to go the most reasonable, safest, flattest piece of land they could find. And it happened to arch around, and that was cheaper than cut through. So this is what Graham did. Graham um, had a meeting, and they said, <coughs> we want this train, we want this train to go through the elements town. So they petitioned or lobbied the uh, 
Railroad, North Carolina Railroads, do it. They said basically the town of Graham was un, was sold under a reasonable expectation that North Carolina Railroad would pass through said town. And whereas the people of Graham and the county of Alamance still a deep interest in the location of said railroad, as nigh to the business part of the town as possible. They wanted it close to town. So the answer to that, now, now we can discuss this and people can show me other reasons, was they did want it in town. They just didn't want it right on Fort Square. They wanted it enough far away. So what did the railroad do? The railroad said, okay, we will dip the railroad down a little bit to be closer to your town. And that's as much as they were willing to do. So I've got a, another map. I hope y'all are not too hot, but I want to show you this map, which is a hand-drawn map. Can you see it? This is Court Square, Elm, South Main and North Main. And what happens right here? Why did that happen? Sure. What? I'm not sure. sure. No. Well, let me go back to, they laid out the town. You can see the layout of the town on one of these pages, the next page after the, um, the next page after the portraits. They laid out the town. They only laid it out so far. And they basically laid it out, you know, about this space. And North Main Street actually stopped right here. But Providence Church was already there. So when it stopped right here, they built a road to Providence Church. There was no road to Providence Church. The road to Providence Church, I'll tell you about that when we go to the cemetery. So they just cut North Main that way. But if they had come straight through and hit what is now present-day Pomeroy Street, they would have hit the railroad. And they didn't do it. I won't say that's a mistake. I'll say that's a miscalculation. You know, they could have easily made North Main Street come right up here, and this is where Cannon Mills is it's right now. You know where that crossroad is. Four or five blocks, Hill Street, Parker Street, right up here to the part where it curves down. That is where they could have put a depot and had a freight station. So they turned the road to get the problem. They just got to that point and they just cut straight that way to Providence Church. Yes. Maybe so. But if they had just thought to make the keep building the road north, they would have crossed the railroad track. No, there was no house there. This is when the city was laid out. No, no, I'm just talking about present day. These are the present day streets. Pomeroy wasn't there, nothing was there. But they could have said, wait a minute, the railroad is only about, and it's not a mile, it's about three fourths of a mile. From the courthouse to the railroad, it's less than a mile. It's not a mile. So that was kind of a, another hearsay. That's in my opinion, hearsay view. It really didn't, uh, um, it really wasn't official. There wasn't an official city ordinance or anything. It was just, again, people speculated that was the reason they didn't go across the railroad. So there's let's. A story, there's a story there somewhere. Yes. About why they chose that route. Maybe the road was already a path and the easier fix. But, but my point is, where you go to Providence Church, how do you get to the railroad? You have to zig down down a pig path to get to it. And we used to have a freight depot right there, but that was it. We didn't have a passenger depot or anything. It was just a small, occasionally the train would stop there and pick up whatever. If they had just kept going, they would have hit the railroad. They could have put a freight depot. They could have put a passenger I am. I admit it. I admit it. 
what? The railroad came in in 1850. Yes. Yes, it did. Well. And it, and it was here when... Uh, the Providence was there before that. It so was. But the, but the well, rate of Providence was, you have to come to the Senate. Because it wasn't, there was nothing here. There was no people coming from here to Providence necessarily. There might have been a, a little road, but it was not a main road. Another Let's go back to question number four. We got to move on here. Don't we? It's hot. The city fathers did not think you, want the North Carolina Railroad shop to be did want the North Carolina Railroad shop to be built in Graham because it would bring commerce and people to that area. They did want company shops. Who put truth? Who put false? It's false. <laughs> I say it's false as if I know, but I'm, I'm again, and I cannot find this, but I've already read this, and I'll make this brief. They didn't want company shops here. Company shops was going to be here somewhere because the North Carolina Railroad needed a somewhere between Raleigh and the coast in Charlotte to maintain the, the <laughs> engines and the tracks and whatever. But the city said, or I should say the town of Graham said, we don't want that here because it's going to be unsightly, it's going to be messy. You know, you can imagine piles of lumber and iron railings and uh, scrap and blacksmith shops and whatever, because there were a lot of buildings in company shops. And we don't want the noise, and we don't want the worry of fire, sparks coming and burning down the town. So, if anything, they did not want company shops. So what does the railroad do? Just a few miles up. A mile and a half or two miles northwest, and they found a big piece of land, and they got it for nothing. And they built the shops there. So, what starts to Everybody starts moving uh, to where the railroad is. Now, today, we can't imagine that because railroads are not that important to us. What's important to us? Interstate. God. Well, that too, but the interstate. What is, what is it? He said God. Oh, the interstate. I'm talking about for commerce. So then, uh, or an airport. But well, we didn't have an airport. Back then, but we didn't have an interstate. But today, right now, Graham is benefiting from the fact that we have the interstate five blocks down the road. Yeah. Burlington is what's happening to Burlington? <laughs> it's dead, except for beer works and you know all of that. So it's not you know it's hurting. But at the time, the railroad was what built. And what started happening is people started leaving Graham and going to a place that was right on the railroad where you could get, and they built a motel, hotel, you could be, get passengers, you could bring your, your crops. It was, all of a sudden it began to grow and they started selling lots. And just to give you an example, I was a historian at Providence Church 40 years ago, if you can believe it. But, um, and we will see, one of the first people to buy a lot on Port Square was Walter Sellers. He was a very wealthy slaveholder, and he made a lot of money, and he was, we'll see his marker. It's a tall, marble obelisk. He had money. And he was a member, the sellers were all members of Providence Church. Providence was called a Christian church, not Christian like our, you know, our home denomination, our home faith is Christian but we have different denominations. It became, it started its own, not Protestant, but there was a movement to start a Christian denomination, which was simply, we're going to be called Christians, we're not going to be Presbyterians or Methodists, we're just going to be Christians. And it grew, and that church flourished. It had a lot of members. The sellers were part of it. And then his son was Dr. B.A. Sellers, who was a physician. 
A R S or E R. A R. But there's some sellers that spell it E R. Uh -huh. But they're still part of the same thing. Dr. B. A. Sellers was, uh, who did I say? Thomas Sellers' his son. He was the oldest child. He went to medical school and he was a business guy. He was a member of Providence Church. He started going, moving his membership to wherever was happening in company shops. And they even asked him at a, at a church meeting, do you still want to be on the wall at Providence? And he said yes. But it didn't stop him. Everybody, the growth was there, and that's why uh, that happened. I mean, but, and I'm going to go really fast through the last thing. Providence Church is the birthplace of Elon College now, Elon University. True or false? Who said true? Who said false? What's well, about time? It's not, it, that's another great one. It's not really the birthplace. So what I've included on this uh, sheet, the last sheet, is the timeline of the schools and grants. They were not sponsored by, they were somewhat sponsored by the Christian church, but that means the bigger Christian church whose headquarters was in Suffolk, Virginia, not Providence. So over a period of time, during the 1850s, we had, what were they? Uh, there was first, there was Union Academy, then there was the current the female academy, then, then there was the um, uh, Graham College, then, but it was not a college like we think of college. It was a, it was a move from the one school, one room schoolhouse to a higher, like a high school. That was what, but they called it a college. It wasn't a college college. So then it just kept growing and changing, but William S. Long, uh, who was more of an educator than he was a minister, had always wanted there to be, for the Christian church, a school of higher learning that you could train to have a, a divinity school. And you could train ministers to be educated and sophisticated ministers in the Christian church and not some hack that came out of the woods and, you know, was preaching this and that and there was some uniform. So he pushed the conference to spend money and they agreed to do it. They agreed to establish a church. They had a special meeting meeting was held at Providence Church. That's the only thing Providence did, was provide a place they <laughs> met to vote on it. They didn't start the school. The school was never there. I've heard people say the school was, the first Elon was at there. No. So, you what? You did down Street to see the sign. Yeah, exactly. Now, what I want you to think about, and I know I've been talking for 45 minutes, is uh, what would have happened if some of these miscalculations hadn't happened? What if the railroad had come to the ground closer to the What if company shops had been closer to the What if Elon, and they wanted Elon to be in Grant, they couldn't get the land, so they had to find some other place to put it. But, what if, but William S. Long, Dr. Long, wanted it in Grant, and he was going to call it Graham College, and it would now be Graham University. We would be a totally different town than we are now. We New York City itself. Yeah. <laughs> we would at least be Greensboro. We would at least have been as big as Greensboro. But the fact that it was over here and Mevin, you know, uh, um, Giles Mevin started. There was a post office there, and it started Mavin. There was a freight de depot there, and then Gibsonville started. All of that spread everything out, but it originally could have easily been right here. And yet, we can still see there's a lot of land, there's a lot of old buildings. If those, if that had happened, and company shops had never been built, and all of it was happening here. A lot of that, the next building would not be there. It would not be there. That would have all been replaced. You take those buildings over there in Burlington, the nine-story bank building, it would have been over here. My, my 
I'm speculating. But you see what I'm saying. The other side of that, and I'm going to quit, is if the railroad had not come through Alamance County and gone through Pittsburgh, we would not even be what we are today. <laughs> we would be Yadsville and Castle County, where there is nothing in Castle County. <laughs> Hardly anything. Okay. So that's basically my talk. I just hope you understand what I'm trying to say and not feel like I'm trying to change the history. But I mean, I just read a lot of different interpretations of this. I've read Carol Troxler's book, is very good. She did a lot of research. Dr. Um, uh, Stokes, Stokes did a lot. Uh, but you know, it's like Brian said, we find out new things and what we thought was the truth may not necessarily be the truth. And we find new evidence, so there's more concrete evidence to prove or to, you know, uh, what do you call it, verify that. So, I'll, we'll take some questions if you want to, if you're hot, we can do it. I know most of this has been about the ram, but really all about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I, all I know is what I've read, and when the regulators were rising up, they were angry about um, the corrupt county officials, which was part of the time uh, royal government, government, gov royal power. We were this is pre Civil War, I mean pre Revolutionary War. The regulators were starting to pass whatever. Tryon comes to uh, the area to put it down. I don't know if that's the same time, but I think it was. And he set up his camp. Jeanette, do you know more? Yes, yes. After uh, Wilmer was defeated at the Battle of Hilbert, he set up his camp in the winter. Okay, that's it. That's camp. it. And it was a But it was still, it was Governor Tryon who came for the regulars, but he came for the, during the Revolutionary War. After the war, it was the last winter. Okay, so that's more, that's right. I'm wrong. Yeah. I found something specific. Well, that's a good question. That's nothing to do with Yeah. <laughs>